friends we are looking at rotational mechanics hc verma exercise solutions and solving question number 80 i am solving here question number 80 which is on page number 200 Question number 80 on page number 200 we are solving. Um, let us see the statement. There is a thin spherical shell. Shell means a hollow sphere. There is a thin spherical shell. It is resting on a ground. It is a rough surface obviously. It will have some friction. It is hit sharply and horizontally by a cube just like we play a game of billiards. It is hit by a cube. Where should it be hit so that the shell does not slip on the surface? Means, suppose the height where we are hitting it is h. They are asking us the value of h in terms of radius. So it does not slip. Does not slip means what? Does not slip means it rolls purely. Pure rolling means what? We are going to use the funda V is equal to R omega. Say this is the center O. It is hit here. As it is hit, it will move in the forward direction. Suppose the force with which it is hit is F. And this force F acts for a small time interval, say T. So what is the momentum imparted to the system? The momentum imparted to the system will be F into T. And that is the change in the momentum. So initial velocity is 0. And let this sphere acquire a velocity V. After the impact. So the momentum imparted to the sphere will be mv, right? And now we are going to take the conservation of angular momentum about this point. Why I have chosen this point? Because if the force of friction is there, it acts at this point only. So if you take angular momentum about this point, the force of friction will not have any role. Correct? the velocity of center of mass is v so let us use the principle of conservation of angular momentum so initial momentum which is imparted to the system is mv so the angular momentum imparted to the system about this point will be m into v into h this angular momentum will be equal to the angular momentum due to rolling sphere due to rotation plus the angular momentum due to translation this is the radius r the angular momentum due to rotating sphere is i omega whereas the angular momentum due to translatory motion is mvr so now let us see what we have here is m into v into h for a hollow sphere i is 2 by 3 mr square you know omega is v upon r plus you can cancel m so v into h will be 2 by 3 times v r plus v r v will cancel and you will get h as phi r upon 3 so the height at which the q should be hit is phi r by 3 a very simple sum quite likely to be asked in the competitive exams like JE or 
एम एच सी टी वेरी सिंपल सम वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड जस्ट रिमेंबर टू टेक एंगुलर मोमेंटम अबाउट दिस पॉइंट एंड एज दिस फियर रोल्स प्योरली यू कैन यूज वी इज इक्वल टू आर इन टू ओमेगा इट इज अक्सट्रीमली सिंपल सम सो इन द सेम थिंग लेट इज सॉल्व अनदर एग्जाम्पल Let us look at example number eighty-one. A uniform wheel of radius r. Wheel you can take same as a ring. Its radius is given r. It is set into rotation with an angular speed omega. So the initial angular speed is omega. Now it is placed on a rough horizontal surface. We are supposed to find the linear speed of the wheel after it starts pure rolling. So, what will be the linear speed when it starts pure rolling? A pretty simple, a regulation example, but let us do it anyway. it is set into rotation with a speed omega now you know that for pure rolling v must be equal to r omega initial speed is zero so the speed must increase and initial angular speed is omega it should decrease so that at one particular stage the relationship v equal to r omega will be satisfied now for the speed to increase there must be a force in the forward direction and that force will be the frictional force this frictional force will result into increase in the linear speed at the same time if you consider the momentum moment of this force about center it is in the anti clockwise direction and it will reduce the initial angular velocity omega so we have got two equations here v equal to u plus at u is 0 and the new angular velocity is omega dash let me take it as omega dash equal to omega plus alpha t now let us find the values of a and alpha according to d alimbert's principle this force is supplying the necessary force to produce acceleration so we have frictional force is equal to ma and we can write a as f upon m at the same time the torque is producing angular acceleration alpha so the torque produced is f into r and that is i into alpha i for a ring is mr square into alpha and that gives me alpha as f upon mr now please note that since it is decelerating this alpha should be taken as minus or here you can put minus alpha directly that will be a better way to avoid confusion since the torque is opposing the angular speed so we write it as minus alpha. okay now what i am going to do is i am going to put the value of a and alpha in these two equations i will put alpha as f upon mr and i will put a as f upon m so what do i get now we'll apply the condition for pure rolling the condition for pure rolling says that v is equal to r into omega dash v is equal to r into omega dash 
now first of all look at these two equations instead of f upon m into t or ft upon m i can put v for this ft upon m i can put v isn't it so what do i have here is omega dash equal to omega minus v upon r and omega dash is also v upon r you can see here omega dash is v upon r so v upon r is omega minus v upon r that gives you 2 v upon r as omega so the final answer v will be omega r upon 2 now there could be a controversy regarding this wheel it can be taken as a ring also sometimes it is taken as a disk also so let us see what will be the situation if we take consider wheel as a disk instead of a ring the only difference will be the moment of inertia i will be mr square by 2 so suppose we take this wheel as a disk in that case our uh, alpha we will have to use the equation i o i alpha is equal to torque and that will be mr square by 2 in that case alpha will be 2f upon m i hope you understand this there will be no difference in a a will be still f upon m but let us see what will be alpha if we consider wheel as a disk and not as a ring in that case f into r will be i i will be m square by 2 alpha and therefore alpha will be 2f upon m so let us put it over here and see what we get we get v as f upon m into t and omega dash equal to omega again f t upon m we write as v so omega dash equal to omega minus 2v upon r right and what we can write as omega dash as omega dash will be v upon r so you have v upon r equal to omega minus 2v upon r that gives you 3v upon r as omega and that gives you v as omega r upon 3 so the fundamentals don't change the only controversy could be whether to take wheel as a ring or a disk i think it will be uh, specified in the problem in a more elaborate way but please note that if nothing is specified it is always better to take will in the form of a disk and not in the form of a ring okay thank you so much